This is 5-Minute Feng Shui, Episode 25, Your Feng Shui Lucky Numbers. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away and usually in about five minutes. Now, let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hi, today we're going to be talking about something a lot of people are very superstitious about, and that is lucky numbers. And if you've had a lucky number or a number you thought was lucky, maybe today's episode might change your mind about what you might think is unlucky into what is lucky, or vice versa. It's interesting to look at the feng shui view of numbers because it has a very uh, different aspect than what you might expect from the Western view. So, you know, feng shui is really an integral part of, or numbers are an integral part of feng shui. In fact, I often tell my consultants who I train that I no longer think about northeast, south, and west. I don't think about compass directions anymore. I don't think about elements of wood or water or metal. I think of all of those things in terms of numbers because it all boils down to a number. So wood is is the number three. And so I think of it like that. The east is the number three. So wood and east is the number three. And that's how I think about it now. So numbers are really important to me in terms of my practice and how I look at feng shui. And uh, I think it's a really interesting thing to, to look at and see how numbers can influence you. So for instance, um, certain numbers in, in Chinese culture and in feng shui are considered to be especially auspicious, like number one, number six, and number eight. Uh, these confer excellent luck to anyone with these numbers in their address or their telephone number, for instance, maybe in your license plate, if you have one like that. Um, these are all considered especially auspicious numbers. Now, the number eight is, contin- is considered auspicious because it's also the shape of the infinity symbol and also a woman's figure too. Uh, In fact, uh, International Women's Day is on March 8th. So uh, there you go. You've got that uh, feminine figure in that number eight. And and think about it, women produce life. So there's that that cycle that that goes on uh, with women that is representative of that number eight. Now in numerology, numbers are typically added together and reduced down to one number. However, this isn't always the practice in feng shui. Rather, it's often the sounds of the numbers that create the best luck. So for instance, uh, an example of this might be an address of 1008 Walnut Street. The sound of the address ends on the number eight, and that gives it extra emphasis. By the same token, the double zero also adds strength. Incidentally, double O's are considered auspicious, whether they're in a number or a letter. Just think of that word word like Google or Yahoo, something like that. So if you have a double zero anywhere in your address or or any kind of ID number, uh, this is a really nice thing. My, my son has a, uh, a social security number that ends at 7100. And uh, so that adds extra emphasis to his his uh, particular number. Now, when you have a home address, you ideally want to have a home that ends in nine, three, eight, one, six, or even zero. Now, according to Chinese uh, culture and feng shui, numbers ending in two, five, or four are not usually considered auspicious. But it's important to understand that the Chinese view before worrying about your house number or your or your uh, driver's license number or whatever number you have credit card numbers whatever it is that you're you're thinking about I want to uh, like for instance a very common and understood uh, thing culturally around the world is the Chinese aversion for the number four 
And the reason why is because in Chinese uh, or Cantonese or Mandarin, uh, I think it's Mandarin, that um, Chinese sounds similar to the word, or excuse me, uh, the number four sounds similar to the word death. That makes this number a negative, have a negative connotation. So my take though, is that the number four is represented by the Southeast, which is the, the direction of prosperity and wealth. And, um, and because the word four doesn't remotely sound like death to me or to most Westerners. So if that's the case for you, then don't be worried about the number four. It's, it's, you're just hearing four, like door or store or more. <laughs> and so that's how I look at the number four. Um, also, there's a, there's a type of feng shui called eight mansions. And this is all related to a number that is derived by the year you were born and your gender. So for instance, and and this is called a qua number, K-U-A, qua. And this number can give you the directions and tell you what directions are most beneficial for you for making money, meeting someone, for personal growth, or for health and romance. And um, this is uh, this is a really uh, a great way to use feng shui numbers for you, for you. So, for instance, so back to the the number four that is often uh, looked upon as a very negative number in feng shui. It really isn't uh, negative negative at all. Like for instance, I am a qua four and my four number, I don't hear death when I hear that. In fact, what I hear is growth because in feng shui, the number four relates to like that small blade of grass poking up through the snow. It's the beginning and burgeoning of growth. So I really like that. I like my number four. And also in Western numerology and in, in, in Western thought, the number four is a number of stability. If you just think of a nice square that has four corners, right? Four corners. And one of the most stable uh, shapes that we have in the world is a square. That's why so many buildings are not uh, circular. They're usually square like houses. So this, let's talk a little bit more about the number four. This is also like the number uh, that you hear about that uh, often gives people the heebie-jeebies, and that's Friday the 13th. You know, uh, many people associate that negative negativity with the number 13, and you'll see sometimes in hotels or buildings that there won't be a 13th floor. Um, and now, I associate 13 with good luck because when you reduce it, one plus three equals four. So we're back to that stable thing. We're also back to the the growth that it it represents. My take is um, really that this is a number that I associate with the duality of the universe. And, uh, And so to me, if you associate negativity with 13, well then maybe that's not your number uh, to, to enhance or something that you're you're going to want to stay away from. But for me, 13th, 13 doesn't give me um, any kind of worry. And in fact, I, I think of Friday the 13th of, as lucky days. So if you could sometimes just change your perspective. It's amazing what the difference it can make. So let's talk a little bit more about um, about uh, like about numbers and for instance uh if you see uh if you see numbers that you can use for for better better luck well then you you definitely want to do that and you can pull that in in a variety of ways maybe you choose that number for a date that you want to sign papers or do something important uh so for instance if your if your date of birth is the 22nd well the 22nd of every month might be a date that you want to initiate something uh this is a day you were born there for you have lots of energy on that day. Uh, these are really potent days for choosing things. But let's just talk a little bit about um, using uh, lucky numbers. Like if your day, let's say your date of birth is March 6th. So March 6th or any 6th of the month is a day that maybe you want to uh, to spend time doing things that are important to you. So let's talk about those numbers that are a little bit more in depth. Um, one of the things that I had talked about just a moment ago was the, that 
that address of 1008 Walnut Street. The number zero is actually a very potent number. And the reason why is it because it adds emphasis to wherever it's placed. <laughs> Think about the easiest way to remember that is, you know, if you've got $10 in your checking account or you've got a million dollars in your checking account, all those zeros really add up and are meaningful. So when you see zeros followed by a, a number followed by zeros, that means that number has all that potency uh, associated with it. Uh, so, so when you see zeros and more of them, you know, just like in your bank account, it's a good thing for sure. Now let's talk about the number one. So it's one of my favorite numbers. I love the number one. Uh, this is the number of career, of personal growth and prospects, music and art, water and transformation. It's associated with the blue or black color like water and the, uh, and the water element. And when you want to make change, uh, just do one thing. So for instance, add a single object somewhere that really m is meaningful to you. Or uh, I think when I think about making change and really making uh, a big effort, uh, when I have something that I really want to achieve in my life, I think about single-minded determination. Yes, I can do other things in my life, but I, everything I do, a lot of times it's focused on that one thing. So for instance, I have a forecast that I write every year and every year uh, a lot of stuff has to kind of go in the background while I focus on that one thing. So if you really want to be powerful and move things ahead, number one is your number, single-minded determination and, uh, and really uh, putting your emphasis on a single item. Just think about a, like a statue on uh, on a stand in a, in a museum and it's the end of a hallway it's a single statue and it catches your eye it says this is important so number one is a very important number now let's talk about number two now this number relates to the southwest and romance motherhood marriage prospects and marital happiness um, the color is beige or yellow it has a large uh, it's relates to the large earth element so if when we think about that it's it's uh, mountains boulders big earth objects and in the southwest sector of the home you this could be uh, you could activate the southwest or the number two uh, with elements such as a globe or maps anything that symbolizes big earth even pictures of mountains you can use two bookends and um, and, and because it relates to relationships, then you're going to want to have things in pairs, right? Because if, let's say if you're single, you really want to activate that two, that number two. So you might put uh, a couple of love objects out to make you think of something romantic or decorate your bedroom in pairs. So uh, having double objects is a really potent thing. Now, another thing to understand about the number two, especially in feng shui and in Chinese culture, is that the number Number two is considered a number of happiness that good things often happen in pairs. And just like when you get married, um, the number two is and in fact called often called double happiness. So when you think about the number two and you want more of something, get something in, in a pair. And uh, and the and that is a great way to an activate good news uh, of the of the double variety, not just the single variety. So number two is a very uh, important number. Now, in the number three, this is a number that is related to the east direction. It, re it is regarding family, nutrition, health, and healing, the oldest son. This can be uh, related to colors that are either green or brown in color, and it relates to like the large wood element. So for instance, like trees or shrubs or large wooden pieces of furniture, baskets, that kind of thing. Um, when you want growth, this is the number that you want and because when we think about big growth we think about you know stacking up and uh like a big tree like a sequoia you if i mean gosh they're what two thousand years old or something <laughs> they're the largest trees in the world so that's your image for growth so three is the trinity it is the number of of attainment so when you're looking to to grow like for instance you want to uh, 
improve your health or you would like to get unstuck in your life, you're going to use three items. So for instance, maybe you get three plants, you do a grouping of three plants or you do a grouping of three items uh, to represent growth and, and movement and getting unstuck. All right, now let's talk about the number four. The in the southeast, this is this is the the number that it's related to, which is the south, which is the southeast is is all about wealth, prosperity, and amassing money, not earning money, amassing money. So it is also related to writing and communication, travel, and sex, not romance, but sex. So the number four is actually kind of a cool number. I like it a lot. Now, of course, if you are Asian or Chinese and you speak Mandarin and the, the, the number four sounds like death to you, you might not be so hip on that number and not that completely understand why. But if you want to uh, associate uh, with more, even more growth or sexual activity or maybe even um, writing and communication or traveling somewhere, get four items uh, to place somewhere uh, in your home uh, to represent the, the, the travel. So maybe it's four images of Fiji that you want to go to have an island vacation. Maybe get four images of Fiji that will uh, help to inspire you. Now let's talk about uh, the number five. This is the number around feng shui that feng shui is built around because there are five main elements wood, water, metal, fire, and earth. And so this number five is a very important number, very uh, uh, transformative kind of number. It really relates to the, the center of everything. So maybe that's the center of your house. Uh, it relates to beige color and the earth element. Uh, some objects that you might use that represent uh, the number five are like uh, rocks or stones, small stones, not, not large ones. So if you want to see, um, you know, health, wealth, and, and happiness doing well and very stable, um, this is a number for you. Uh, think about the number five is the Pentagon in, in Washington, D.C., which represents those five points. Um, you can add five lights, five candles. Uh, this really enhances the power of the center uh, and uh, is a number that if you're looking to make, create, pull in all the energy of all the elements uh, to help you get unstuck, to help you improve your life, then you're going to want to do items in an, in an arrangement of five. So now let's talk about the number six. This is a really beautiful number. I love this. It's the number of heaven and heavenly blessings. It represents the direction of the Northwest and helpful people like mentors and the people that I, I like to call the who you know people. Those are those people that can just kind of open doors, make introductions, that kind of thing. It's also relating to fatherhood, to uh, bre the breadwinner, to people of influence, also to uh, international travel or business. So uh, this is all about uh, really big stuff, really like on a global type scale. So if you're trying to uh, create a business that has a really global scale, you're going to want to be thinking about the number six and having things in items of six or having some kind of six influence. Now the colors that represent the number six are white, silver, or gold, and they represent the large metal elements. So things like filing cabinets or uh, large displays, metal displays, cars, those are all large metal elements and uh, also electronics uh, as well. So if you want to enhance uh, things, get people to uh, help you, bring opportunities to you, um, have that favor, the favor of good fortune, then ringing some uh, bells, uh, some brass bells, or especially around your front door going in a clockwise circle three times with that six, uh, this can really create some, some strong movement for you and help you uh, 
come to the notice of people uh, who can help you and can ease you into something new or something you're looking for. So it's a really terrific a number. And, um, and now let's talk about the number seven. The number seven has always been considered to be a lucky number. Now in feng shui, um, in some types of feng shui, the, the number seven actually is not considered uh, especially lucky, but it's one of those numbers that in certain applications, it's not as lucky in others it is. So let's just talk about the number as what it relates to and not whether it's lucky or unlucky. So the first thing that that comes to mind is it relates to the small element of small metal. And this could be like a scalpel, a staple, uh, any kind of knife, uh, anything that is a small metallic object, a BB, uh, something like that. Now, the West is also related to socializing, creativity, projects, the luck of children and, or having children, uh, de- descendants luck. And uh, if you want to help your children or your creativity, you can hang a small metal mobile uh, with seven pieces in the west corner of your home and that can help you uh, improve your your luck or your creativity. And the colors of white, silver, and gold are especially here good in, in, or relate to the number seven. So if seven is your lucky number, gray is also another color that it really relates to the, the number seven. Now the number eight is, uh, is a number that relates to thinking, the mind, not the head, but the mind, how you think. It relates to meditation, spirituality, education, your thinking and your thoughts. And uh, what's interesting too is the body part it relates to, even though it re- relates to your thought and your thinking, it, it the body part that it relates to is actually your hand. Uh, and when you think about how many teachers, I don't know about you, but my, uh, I think my second grade teacher erased a lot of my handwriting (laughs) test and made me write it over and over because she wanted my handwriting to improve because that really relates to the mind. Now this element or this number relates to the earth element. Uh, so it is a small earth though. So that might be marbles or, or rocks or stones or gravel, something like that. Now this is, uh, this is an element that you want to enhance uh, this element, then you would put items in or number of items in the number of eight. Uh, So so eight items are especially beneficial here, as well as those colors of beige or yellow um, and anything that looks sort of uh, earth-like. It could also be um, like a clay type of color or terracotta uh, is an earth element. So those colors are all really beneficial if you are a let's say an eight qua number, or you were born on the eighth day of the month. Now the number nine is a number that's really interesting number. It ha- adds extra emphasis and it rega- and it relates to change, quick, rapid change and, um, and, and anything that you want to get moving because it has a lot of yang energy related to it. The number nine is related to the direction of south and it also relates to fame, opportunity, dreams, awards, success, happiness, and recognition, material rewards as well. And the the color that relates to it is red and that can be anything in the red from palest pink to fuchsia to deep uh, crimson red uh, and it relates to the fire element so this is a and think about fire fires get things going it makes you hungry it makes you warm it, fire adds change fire means change and uh, gets energy moving and the objects that relate to it are like lights and candles a fireplace uh, in the in now in the nine in the with the nine if nine is your lucky number then you're definitely going to want to have items in groups of nine. Uh, This could be nine pictures. This could be nine peacock feathers. Uh, It could be anything that you like in, in groups of nine, nine flowers, nine roses. Now let's talk about a couple of other numbers. Now we've talked about numbers zero to nine, but there are a couple of other numbers that are important too in feng shui, and that's the number 10. Uh, Let's talk about that. It is a number of perfection because once you've 
gotten to, to number nine, then number 10 means you've completed that cycle. So this is uh, an important number and it is when you see the number 10, it's an important number. I mean, just think about, uh, we've had a movie, The Perfect 10, I think it was, wasn't it? It was called Perfect 10 or 10, something like that. You know, when we talk about somebody having it all together, oh, they're a 10, you know, everything's a 10. So we think of that as the ultimate. So when we think of 10 or you see 10, that's that is the ultimate. It's also the number one with extra oomph, right? Because it's got a one with a zero behind it. So it's a really important number. The other number that's also very important is the number 11. Now this is a number that you don't want to reduce. That is add them together. One plus one is two. Number 11 stands on its own, just like number 22, which is twice the number 11. So when you see number 11, this is an important number for spirituality. It's a number that is a, a, a number of of guidance and importance in both in feng shui thought, Chinese thought, and in Western numerology thought. Number 11, it has the type of energy that can lead people and change minds. Um, you know, so it's a very potent number. So if you have 11 in your, in your date of birth, this is a really, uh, that's especially important number. Now that's actually my, my number is, uh, I was born on the 11th day of June. So six and 11, um, comes to an eight. So <laughs> six, one, one may, I, I see that a lot. Uh, I, in fact, I often look at a clock and it says six, 11, I always find that fascinating. So we're at the end of, of five minute feng shui at this episode. Uh, and, uh, but I want to leave you as always with your three tips and that is how to use these numbers in a way that is helpful for you and that gives you the luck of those numbers. The first is to always use your date of birth as a lucky number. Your date of birth, tip number one, is always the lucky number for you. So look for ways that you can include that in account numbers, addresses, anything that you have, uh, anything that you have that you can include that number on is very lucky for you. So try to schedule things on that date. So if you were born on the 19th, then the 19th, the number 19 is an important day for you. The other one is your qua number. And now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, tip number two uh, about your qua number, this can be found on my website, redlotusletter.com and click under free tools and qua and click on qua number. And that's K-U-A. The qua number is the number that relates to uh, an element like wood or metal or fire or water and has, has to do with your year of birth and your gender. So you find out your qua number uh, by going to my uh, qua calculator and it will tell you the directions that are lucky for you. Now you can also use your qua number as a date to initiate things. So maybe you sign contracts just like on your birth date. Maybe you sign contracts, you do things, you schedule things that are important to you on those dates, negotiations, because that, that number, your qua number gives you extra emphasis and, uh, and power, uh, as you're making those dates. All right. So let's talk about tip number three, and that's using feng shui numbers for luck. And we talked about number one is when you want to make big change transformation, you're going to pick one thing and you're going to work on it and you're going to focus on it and you're going to have single-minded determination. Uh, number two, these rep, this number represents happiness. So I'm going to just say, for instance, um, when I find a pair of shoes, I really love, I buy two. That gives me double happiness for sure. So look at ways that you can incorporate two items to create double happiness. For instance, maybe you buy uh, uh, some uh, uh, some gift, small item for yourself and buy another one for a friend and say, hey, I bought this for myself and I love it and I thought you might like it too. Double happiness. Look for ways that you can incorporate the number two to create more happiness. The number three is for growth. So when you want to have big growth, you're going to look for three things. Maybe you have three people that you work with. Maybe it's uh, you add three auspicious objects to your de office desk or three plants in a corner of your home to get growing, especially if you're feeling stuck 
or stagnant or like things aren't moving ahead, put three items somewhere to add that extra growth energy, especially th three items like plants. Uh, that really helps. Number six is for heavenly blessings. Look for that number six anywhere you can to get more good fortune your way and incorporate six items into your into your life in some, some manner. Maybe that's six flowers, six roses, half a dozen. It just seems uh, that number six just seems to make us feel uh, like it's a blessing of some kind. And then obviously number eight, this is a number for prosperity and ease. So when you're looking for for making money faster. If you're looking for opportunities, you're going to want to use that number eight, whether that's in a number for an account, a, a number for an address, a, the day of doing something important, maybe you pick that number eight, or anytime you can pick a number eight, that's also going to bring you uh, prosperity and the, and, the, and the making of it more easily. It also brings recognition too. And the last is number nine. Nine is a number of sheer energy and getting things moving again. So if you can move 27 things around your home, and that's nine, the number nine, times three, right? We talked about three is the number of growth. So if you do not, if you move nine th things in three places around your home, that's 27 moves. That is a lot of energy, and that will help you really get unstuck and move fast. All right, then. I hope today was fun and interesting for you and learning ways that you can use numbers in your life for good luck and good fortune. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks for listening today to 5-Minute Feng Shui. The year of the pig is coming, and I want to share with you where you can find everything you want in the year ahead. That's because the Prosperity Star is coming this year, and it's showering us with a roaming candle of opportunities for money, abundance, and love. And it's all in my annual Feng Shui Forecast Success Pack. You'll get a full year of in-depth Feng Shui details about how to use the energy of the year for success and prosperity. And it's for every house and every zodiac sign. And my forecast also includes lucky clothing colors, handbag, and wallet colors. You'll get a full zodiac report for your Chinese zodiac sign and so much more. Be sure to go to redlotusletter.com forward slash annual for all the details on the year of the pig.